Well, hello guys, this is Brian, Cliffside Outfitters. Glad to have y'all back with us. Uh, today, we're going to do a short video on aging venison. where I age my venison and uh, I know most of you guys are probably familiar with uh, the aging process uh, but I'm going to show you what we do uh, and we've tried it several different ways uh, but for the last few years this is the way that I do it and it's probably my favorite way uh, now we live down here in the south so uh, hanging a whole deer outside uh, is out of the question pretty much out of the question uh, we'd have to get real lucky with the weather uh, for that to happen. Um, so, with that being said, uh, what I do, I age my venison in a refrigerator. Uh, I used to age it on ice in a cooler, and a lot of you guys still probably do that. Um, but as far as putting it on ice in a cooler, well, let's just put it this way. When you get it out to cut it up, to butcher it, uh, some of the connective tissue in the deer seems to absorb water uh, and it's it's pretty slimy I mean I'm just gonna I'm gonna say it like it is it it's slimy and slick and uh, it, it's just a mess uh, so what we've been doing uh, if you dry age meat uh, in other words you hang it with uh, no covering on it uh, and it's exposed to the air uh, it'll that's probably the prime way to age meat. However, you're going to lose some meat. Uh, the outer, uh, the exterior of whatever you're aging uh, is going to get dry and you're going to have to cut that off. So you're probably going to lose, you know, 20% of your meat by dry aging it. Uh, and I just, as hard as I have to work to kill a deer, I don't want that to happen. So what I do, I do sort of a, a cross process. I put it in the refrigerator. And, uh, well, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Let me just show you what we do. Now, when we harvested this deer yesterday, uh, we put it inside our, our cooler. Now, I can't go any further without uh, giving my guys at City Electric Supply a big thumbs up. Uh, they've provided us with this cooler uh, and we're just trying it out and it's it's a cone cooler but uh, I'm gonna give them a shout out because uh, they've been good to us so uh, but we've got as you can see we've got our meat uh, inside of our cooler and uh, yesterday morning we uh, harvested this deer we put it in the cooler we put one bag of ice on it and then this morning I throwed uh, a little more ice on it till I could get out here to the building. Uh, but uh, in the cooler, uh, we've got a whole deer. Uh, and uh, let's just take this ham, for example, pretty good looking ham. Uh, but we cut it up out in the field. And it's very important that you do that. Get your deer cut up and get it on ice. Uh, you don't want to let your meat lay around hot. And uh, that's a lot of what uh, turns people off of eating venison. Uh, it's not taken care of properly. But let me get a piece up here on the cutting board and I'll show you what we're going to do. Like I told you before, I'm out here in the building and uh, I've got a, I was fortunate enough for somebody to give me an old sink that I installed out here. And uh, uh, that, that makes it real handy because uh, I can do this without getting fussed at, you know. Got our meat on the cutting board. 
And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that meat and I'm going to look it over real good. Uh, you can see that we had to, we had to f clean this deer in the field, so it's got a, a couple leaves and stuff on it. And anything that uh, uh, is stuck to it, I'm going to pick off or trim off. There's a little piece of piece of the hide that's still left on there. We're going to get it off there. And a uh, little dirt there, we'll get that dirt. And uh, we're not trying to trim this meat up like we're going to butcher it, but we're just getting some of the, I don't want to age a pine needle flavor into it. Uh, but uh, that looks pretty good. Got a little bit of dirt right there. Let's get that off. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it in my sink, and this is cold water, uh, and you'll just have to suffer along with me because it's cold out here and this is cold water. So, but you want to use cold water, don't you want to heat your meat up. Uh, but we're going to rinse it down real good and get it cleaned up. And you can see already, just by running that water on there, you can see how it's starting to get uh, sort of slimy. And that, that, to me, that's the most aggravation in butchering. It's when the meat gets all slimy and, and uh, I mean, it ain't nasty or nothing. But, but anyway, let's get our paper towels. We'll take our paper towels and I'm going to dry this down. Make sure I don't have any hair or anything on it. I can do this now and I won't have to do it later. But, uh, we'll get it, get a cutting board dry. I'm going to have to have a few more towels, I believe. Get any leaves or debris or anything off of it. Get cleaned up real well. Oh, we got it out here, and I'm wiping it off and making sure it's clean. Uh, let's talk about the aging process for just a minute. What, ha what happens when you age the meat? Uh, there's a chemical reaction. Uh, when the animal uh, dies, uh, initially, uh, enzymes in the meat, chemicals are converted to lactic acid. And the lactic acid can be responsible for uh, a tangy flavor. Now, I'm not talking about uh, the, you know, some deer's got, uh, if you kill a seven year old deer in the middle of the rut, uh, he's going to have a strong taste. Uh, but all animals have uh, the lactic acid buildup, and the meat has a tangy flavor. Um, until it's aged. Once it's aged, that lactic acid is converted. And during that process, it breaks down the connective tissue of the animal. Uh, aging is not rotten the meat. What we want to do, we want to hold this meat uh, at a temperature that is between, if we want to be above freezing, but definitely below 40 degrees. Uh, if you if you get above 40 degrees, then you you're gonna have bacterial growth, and you don't want that. What we want, we just want a chemical reaction that takes place with the enzymes in the meat, convert that lactic acid, and it's gonna break down uh, the fibers, and your meat's gonna be more flavorful. Uh, the flavor will be uh, it's hard to explain it, but it's stronger, but it's more mellow, uh, and uh, those connective fibers in the meat, the fibers of the muscle that's chained together, uh, they're going to break down and separate somewhat. So the texture of the meat is going to be much more tender. So we got it dried off. Uh, let me show you what we're going to do next. Now out here in the building, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a refrigerator. And uh, I don't keep this thing running year round. Uh, but during the hunting season, usually it's got uh, uh, some meat in it, and sometimes I have some potatoes in the bottom or whatever, but uh, usually keep some water out here in the summertime. Uh, but we've got a refrigerator, and this is the old one uh, that uh, somebody didn't need anymore, so it was given to us. But this is how we utilize 
Uh, and you can do this, now don't get me wrong, you can do this in your refrigerator out the house. Uh, it's not going to smell bad. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it just takes some space. So that's why we've got an extra refrigerator to do that. Uh, but if you'll look, inside this refrigerator, I have got uh, one of these 55 gallon, uh, I think it's a 3 mil or a 5 mil, plastic uh, bags. You know, like a trash bag, basically. Now the reason I use, I don't really need that big of a bag, but this type of trash bag, for one, it's sick enough to hopefully we won't have any leaks. Second, uh, these bags don't have any kind of uh, perfumes. You know, you you trash bags that you put in the in the in the waste basket in the kitchen. Uh, they some of them got that perfume smell. We don't want anything like that that'll get on our meat. So we just got a plain plastic construction uh, trash bag. And all I'm gonna do, y'all see me dry this meat off. I'm gonna take that deer meat. That ham right there, and I'm gonna, if I can, I'm gonna slide it inside that bag. Just like that on the on the refrigerator shelf. Now you can see that it's not it's not vacuum sealed and there's not a lot of water in there. So I'm not gonna have uh it's not gonna be sopping wet. Uh there'll be a little bit of blood that drains out of it. Uh, but I'm not going to have all that sticky mess that you get when you do it in a cooler. Like I said, it don't do anything uh, to the meat. It don't hurt anything. It's just a mess to butcher. But anyway, so, so I've got my ham in there. I'm going to take and place the rest of my meat in this bag. And then once I get it in the bag, I'm going to pull this forward and I'm going to bring it up. Now, I'm not going to tie it up. Uh, I'm just going to leave it up like this right here. And uh, that venison is its exposed to some air uh, that's in the refrigerator. Uh, in a refrigerator, it's fairly low humidity. Uh, but So it's going to be exposed to some air. And some of the moisture that wicks out of the venison will actually evaporate. Uh, but it's not going to be exposed to enough air to where it dries out and I start losing uh, part of my venison, which is what I don't want. So anyway, uh, that's all there are to it. I'm going to put it in this refrigerator and I'm going to leave it. I sort of have a rule of thumb. If I kill one one weekend, I'm not going to butcher it to the neck. Now if you want to take the tenderloins and go ahead and fix you up some tenderloin, uh, that'd be fine. Um, I age mine, uh, but if it's the first kill of the year, I've got to have my fix. So I may have some tenderloin for breakfast uh, the next morning. But you certainly want to leave it in here at least 48 hours. Uh, because when that animal uh, meets its demise, uh, rigor mortis is going to set in. And all those muscle fibers are going to tighten up, they're going to pull together. And that's what makes it stiff. If you butcher that uh, while it's the muscle fibers are pulled tight together, uh, your meat's going to be tough. There's just no two ways about it. The meat will be tough. Uh, so you want to at least let that go away. And, and in my opinion, this is just my opinion, from the time that it's harvested uh, to the time the rigor mortis pretty much fully goes away is about 48 hours. Now. I'm going to leave mine in here seven days, like I said, and the reason is I'm going to let those enzymes start to work. They're going to start to do their magic, and they're going to turn that into something that's more uh, like what you would see uh, on the grocery store shelf, some aged product uh, that's, got, uh, that's tender and juicy. Uh, so there you go, guys. Uh, that's how we do it here at Cliffside Outfitters. Until next time, Mrs. Brian. Y'all have to.